All right, yo, uh, this is Justin Lee. If you have the pleasure of watching this video, that means one, you're probably interested in backpacking and two, you're probably interested in backpacking with me. Um, there's a lot of good videos, there's a lot of good books online, but this is the gear that I use. And I've actually been meaning to do this for a while because every time I take someone out new on the trail, um, it'd be a good idea to get them accustomed with the gear. And I'm not saying the gear that I use is necessarily a prescription for anyone else, but it is the gear that I love and let's get started. Um, I literally, when I go backpacking, I only grab two items. I grab my gear bag and I grab a backpack. That's because all the other items are already in my truck. So I just grab two items already hit on the road. Um, Friday morning, I'll just grab two items, go to work, and then from there, probably go out to Angel's Forest or Joshua Tree or even Big Sur and just stop by Walmart or Rite Aid or a grocery store and just grab a few items and I'm all set. Um, before we get into the bag, um, I have not opened the bag. I have, I have an idea of what's in there, but I'm trying to make this video with investing as little time as possible. Um, so I'm not going to make this super professional or, or whatever. Um, just the items that are not in my gear bag first. This, I don't even bring, but I use this as a placeholder. Um, this is a spare change of clean clothes. This you do not backpack with. This is waiting for you in your car or wherever you exit from. So you can change from your backpacking clothes into clean clothes for your drive home. Um, when you're backpacking, you feel like you don't smell that bad and you feel pretty clean even if you jump in the lake a few times, but it's always a mind blowing. It's always a mind blow when you put on clean clothes, you let your clothes sit for a while on the ground and you pick them up and take a whiff. And you're like, wow, I can't believe I didn't notice how bad I was. But anyhow, clean clothes is always great. Um, I think it's something that noobs always forget and they have to drive home and eat dinner in stinky clothes. This I don't normally bring. Uh, I actually got this for this trip I'm doing, uh, hauler ray. It's a bear canister. Um, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, oh man, this is a different bear canister than the one I'm accustomed to. It's just a big, just a big can essentially. You put your food in there, your bears can't get to it. I prefer bear hangs, but bears are getting pretty smart these days. Again, these are items I don't normally carry with me. Uh, this is already in my truck. This is actually empty, denatured alcohol. Um, I'll pour some of this stuff into this plastic bottle. Uh, you don't want to store denatured alcohol in here because over time, like months, the Denatured alcohol will actually eat to the plastic, but for a week long backpacking trip, not a huge problem. Again, something else I keep in my truck for quick naps is a Thermarest, and this is the one I use. Um, I actually cut it, it comes out longer, but I only have eight panels, um, and that's kind of a trick to reducing the weight because your legs are gonna hang off this thing, and you don't really need it, and I'll show you why later. Um, also, all these items that I'm talking about, they can deserve a conversation. Conversation has pros, cons, and other you know good substitutes for that item. Anyhow, another item I carry in my truck is a sleeping bag. This is a zero degree Nemo sleeping bag. Uh, it's the lightest that I can find at REI. I actually have another bag that I'm, I'm wanting to try, but I love this thing a lot. Um, again, it goes down to zero degrees. Um, on a couple backpacking trips, I used to have a 40 degree and the temperature would drop to about 40 degrees so you'd think, oh Justin, you're fine. But when it comes to rated degree bags, um, keep in mind that the rating they give you is for survival. It's not for comfort. And generally you want at least 10 degrees above that rating to be comfortable. Um, but I, and there's like a whole bunch of mechanics and strategies on how to sleep. Um, and that deserves a conversation of its own. However, I know I sleep cold. I get cold when I sleep. So 
when I take naps in 60 degree weather, I'll get in there. Granted, I won't zip myself to the fullest, but um, that zero degree bag has carried me up until about 20 degrees. After that, I'd probably think about investing in a negative uh, bag. This is my backpack. Um, I've done a few backpacking trips with this. Uh, it's, it weighs one pound. Um, it's essentially a bag with these little stays. Um, holler at Matt Schaefer because he's the one that introduced me to this bag. I absolutely love it. Uh, I actually came back uh, from a, a three week backpacking trip from Japan using only this bag. And I had a great time. This bag is a champion. Um, a lot of friends ask me, that's all you have for three weeks in Japan? And that is correct. And I think I was well prepared. And it's always a good feeling when you can laugh at other tourists saying they're carrying all their luggage onto trains and stuff. But anyhow, when I get to the main show, this is my gear bag. Um, I love this bag very much because of all the great times I've had. Uh, I see this bag and I just get happy. Um, let's begin. Um, let's see what I have in here. Okay, first thing that comes to mind, mashed potatoes. I have not used them. Great backpacking food. Here's a water filtration, uh, filtration thing I haven't used yet because I don't actually plan on using this. I have what's a, a Sawyer squeeze. You put this on top of your water bottle um, and you put dirty water or like river water into the water bottle and you kind of suck on this like a nipple and this filtration, the water goes to the filtration and you just suck on it. So there's dirty water in your bottle, it goes to the nipple and it's done. Um, no filtration, no bad taste, whatever. Um, what else? I was gonna say something. What was I gonna say? Ah, I don't have a water bottle in this bag. Why? Because I just go to the grocery store and I buy two of those one liter smart water bottles. That's kind of the trademark for like the backpacking community. Um, there's no washing, you just recycle it at the end of your trip. Um, just remember, you might want to get an extra bottle cap in case you lose your bottle cap. Because I hear horror stories about people losing their bottle caps and not having a cap for their water. Uh, I got trash bags just for the end of your trip. That's always nice. Um, matches. Uh, I got a wooden spoon. This I'll actually cook with and eat with. Um, I have got a couple in here. A couple wooden spoons because they come with a set. And this one's the dirtiest, so I imagine this is the one I use. I might even consider cutting the handle off just to save a little bit of weight. Um, this probably belongs in the trash. It's actually a, a bleach tablet to clean your camelback uh, bladders. I know one of my good homies is thinking about using a bladder, uh, Joshua Fong. Um, cleaning those things is no fun. It's, it's so much more simpler just to recycle the smart water bottle at the end of your trip. It's actually lighter in weight. Um, this, this is nothing. If you want to, this is actually just extra drawstring, uh, stretchy string just in case. Um, and these aren't the steaks that I use, but I was on a trail and this lady was getting rid of her steaks because she traveled from Ohio and uh, she didn't want to throw them away, so I said, here, I'll take them just in case, but I actually don't plan on using these. Some people will actually use this uh, as their poo shovel. I don't know where I had it. Oh, there it is. One moment. All right. This is actually my newest investment. It's a, it's a poo shovel. It's a just, it's like not even an ounce, I think. So some people will just use their tank stays and dig a hole. I'll plan on using this. I hear good stuff about this. Um, again, that's a, how to defecate in the woods is another conversation of its own. This is a North Face uh, rain jacket. I actually don't use this. Um, I don't know why it's in this bag. Um, this is actually cool for street gear. Hey, uh, granted, this is for backpacking, not for car camping or not for camping. So I am not going to be cool wearing this gear. 
Uh, car camping, I have a different bag for cool gear, like, oh, yo, what's up, ladies, uh, in my nice jacket, but I will not be cool. That belongs in my cool camping bag because my rain gear is this disposable purple uh, trash bag thingy. And I love this thing because it's super lightweight, uh, keeps you wet. Um, actually, there's a bunch of strategies for rain. That's another conversation. You can take an umbrella. Um, you can take a really good rain jacket, the rain skirt, you can do waterproofing. But the best, cheapest, most guaranteed way to not get wet um, from the clouds up above is to not hike in the rain. So don't hike in the rain. Look at that weather forecast. Freeze dried food. Uh, I can't eat pork. So this is chili mac with beef. Uh, oh, this is a snack bag uh, from a while back. Let's see what Justin eats on the trail. Uh, nature bars, always a safe investment. Uh, organic ramen noodles, um, milk duds, and Oreos. Um, and they still look crunchy. So this can all go back in there later. Uh, here's an egg container uh, for ramen. Um, here's another of that purple uh, disposable bag. See, the thing is, those things are not durable. They'll tear, like a twig will tear it. But as long as you stay on the trail and don't go off trail, you should be fine. But this is a replacement. This one is green. That purple one is a little bit more flamboyant, a little bit more style. Um, oh, one thing that's in, actually in the laundry right now, and I think my mom took my other one, is you need a, a dry fit t-shirt uh, that dries quick. Um, this is the same thing, however, it is long sleeved, um, and it's got a zipper. It's, it's just a dry fit, nothing special. Um, I don't wear this one that often because you don't need a lot of layers when you're hiking. You're generating so much heat when you hike, that this was actually, I would probably put this in my cool bag for when I'm sitting around the campfire. I don't do campfires in my backpack. Um, uh, TP, uh, toilet paper. Um, I like using rocks and sticks. That's how I was taught. Um, less of environmental footprint, less weight. But so I'll use rocks and then I'll do the finishing touches with a teepee. So I don't need to take that much. Uh, these are cool. Um, I only use these when I'm in the desert and I might be using these cause we're going to do some snow. These are special sunglasses. These are super, super dark sunglasses for, for glacier, for a lot of sun and tents. Um, I like them. They, they got like a steampunk feel to it. Here's a roll of napkins because things get dirty out there. Here's another item that we mean to use. It's less than one ounce. It's a headlamp. Um, I don't use headlamps. It's another conversation. Uh, oh, I guess I do use a headlamp only for about like two minutes per night. Uh, even then, it's not even necessary. Um, we can get into a whole conversation about that, but it's really about embracing the night and letting your eye vision accustom. Granted, the only reason why I would even imagine carrying a nice headlamp is in the case you need to do night, night hiking, which I'm not a fan of because it's dangerous, but there was a story where there was a fire, a big national forest fire, and these two campers had to hike in the night and uh, a headlamp, a good headlamp made that so much better to escape the fire. Um, they made it out alive, thank God. This is something I do carry in my backpacking. This is a must. It's like a thermal fleece. It's like the dry fit. Um, it's very breathable, but somehow it keeps a lot of warmth in there. This one has a hoodie. Um, there, I mean, you, you'll be a lot cooler without the hoodie. Um, cooler as in more fashionable. However, this does a lot better with heat retention. I think the hoodie probably adds another maybe 20 to 30% of heat if it didn't have the hoodie. Um, I won't hike with this, but when I get to camp and I'm not sweaty anymore, I'll take off all my clothes, put this on, put the clothes back on, and it's just going to be a lot warmer and it's breathable. Um, I'm, I'm sure if you haven't already, you've noticed those man-made fabrics, they do not breathe. 
you want something natural like a like a sheep's wool or merino wool or cotton. Don't ah, do not bring cotton. Cotton is thy enemy on the trail because it doesn't dry. It gets if you sweat or if it's raining, it gets wet. It takes forever to dry. So cotton is no good. Ah, this is actually the headlamp. Again, this is not cool, but it is cool to me. Um, it's a tiny, tiny headlamp. Um, uh, and here's the two batteries. Um, and the light it gives is definitely not sustainable as far as night hiking, but it's enough. I even, I probably won't even bring the night light because I'll have my phone on me and there's a, a light on my phone. Um, and so there's really no, necess it's not necessary to, to bring a headlamp, I think. Uh, I've never used these. Um, this is called Luco Tape, which is actually moleskin. Um, it's never been opened because blisters will ruin your trip. Thank God and inshallah, I have never or will ever get a blister um, on the trail. I've gotten it playing tennis, it does suck. Essentially, it's like a really, really thick, sticky band-aid. Uh, this is what the pros use, you just unroll it. Of course, I wouldn't bring this whole thing. I'd probably bring a few inches. Um, I, I hope I have socks in here. I might not have socks. The reason why I wouldn't have socks in here is because I have them in my truck already. And I don't think I have socks in here. So I'm just gonna open up this. I keep a, a few of these uh, changes in my back. Uh, I don't, actually, I don't have one of these too. This is the XO Officio underwear. Um, ladies, if you ever get to do the hunky funky with me, you'll probably catch me wearing these. What was that? I just listened to a musical artist. He goes, he calls sex the knickknack paddywhack. Um, XO Officio, great. Um, I actually prefer this model, it's Heather Gray. I think it's cooler. Um, definitely makes you look more satisfactory. Um, but they don't make this model anymore. I have no idea why. It actually wicks away moisture so much better. Their advertisement on their website is that they traveled the world an entire year and only carried two pairs of underwear with them. Um, actually, no, they said they carried one pair of underwear and they're saying, oh, all right, maybe we use two pairs. It's a joke, you kind of have to be there to, to, to listen to it. Another trash bag that I didn't use. Here's the soap. Um, I'll talk about the soap later. Uh, let's see. Here's food, I'm not gonna open it. So, I just got done doing a 36 hour shift for Ocean Blue and I woke up and this is me after a nap. All right, what do I have in here? I have ramen, I have lightweight tuna, I have oatmeal, I have raisins or craisins, cranberry raisins. I love cranberries. Um, I always think of Leonardo DiCaprio from The Departed. Uh, cheddar broccoli. Again, you just add water and eat. Um, car camping is a different thing. I got a buddy named Hugh. He was like the sous chef or apple, and he served me duck out in the desert, and that was that was a culture shock. What else? Let's keep going. I got a lot of stuff in here. These are sunglasses. Uh, these are probably the sunglasses I'll be wearing. These aren't cool enough for day-to-day -day wear. Um, they're brown um, and you want polarized versions. All right, what's next? A funnel. Why do I use funnel? Uh, when you pour denatured alcohol into your bottle, that's nice. Um, and that's pretty much it. But there are times where you would want a funnel. You don't bring this on the trail. Um, this right here, buddy, is a pillow. Um, so if you know me, you know that I probably sleep on the floor uh, naturally. And um, my buddy Andy Tam got me into it. He's really Chinese. 
and uh, it's not a good day. I can usually get it with three breaths, but this is your pillow. Uh, you don't want to put your head on it like this. You want to put your shoulders and your head like that and it gives you a lot more support. All right, here's tablets. Uh, this is the Aquamira. Uh, it's trending right now. Uh, there's an A and a B. You keep, theoretically, and again, I would repackage these into smaller bottles. Um, you pour A, you pour B, you let it sit. It turns green, kills all the bacteria in your water. A, I've been out there, I'm drinking water straight from lakes and from rivers, and I've never had a problem. Um, Again, that's another conversation on how to be mindful on your drinking water. Uh, here's, here's a cute little thing. Um, you know, I was gonna actually incorporate this into my day-to-day -day life, but the brush on this isn't strong enough. It's a tiny toothbrush with a tiny little uh, casing for it. Uh, this came from Lightsmith, lightsmith.com. That's L-I-T-E, Smith. Um, they have a lot of cool little knick-knack paddy wags. More toilet paper. Uh, here are some little droppers. Droplets, droppy, droppy thingies. Um, you put sunscreen in here um, and you kind of squeeze it out. Um, this is a bigger one. These are smaller ones. Uh, so like again, I would take the aqua mirror and Not carry this whole thing because this is honestly like to treat maybe 200,000 gallons where you're only theoretically drinking 10 gallons on a trip um, It's a long trip of course and you put some of this you don't have to carry the whole thing. It's just it's in the spirit of saving weight uh, Ah, um, I have one of these but because I got my bamboo spoon, um, and I don't do a whole lot of cooking per se, uh, these little plastic, you know, um, scrapers for pots and pans are handy. But again, I just boil water. Um, this is just a, uh, I don't even know what they're called, like a laundry cloth that you put on the dry cycle to keep your bag fresh. Um, from humidity and stuff like that. It just keeps the bag feeling fresh. So when you open your happy bag, <sighs> so this is actually going back in there. Uh, okay, okay, what do we got here? What do we got here? Alrighty. So this is actually the last toothbrush I was using on the trip. Um, you can't pick your colors, so I don't know. This is a tiny chapstick. Uh, chap lips are no good. Here's is sunscreen. No, that is not sunscreen. That is not sunscreen. I know what this is. And that's what you get for not labeling your... Uh... At least it smells like lavender now. So what I was saying is this soap goes into this little thing. And I love Matt Schaefer because he says the surfactants are higher in Dr. Bonner soap. And I had never heard the word surfactants before, and I'm not gay, but that was pretty hot. Um, Cause, yeah, I can't believe I said that. Anyhow, uh, this is a, a mini Bic. This is a, a flagship for any lightweight backpacker. Um, uh, super cool. Um, don't go with black, cause it's bad luck. Um, but they have like a safety tip. Um, take it off and it'll function a lot easier. Uh, these are cool, got these from Lightsmith too. Um, these are really cool actually. Uh, they come in here, I pour them in a little bag, and I just take this bag with me. Uh, they're chewable toothpaste tablets. So um, you chew them, brush your teeth, rinse, spit out, really cool. I'll actually keep these in my pocket because after like a like a good 12, 13 mile day, you don't really feel like going through your bag and uh, 
fishing out your stuff. So sunscreen, which that wasn't sunscreen. Sun, even even hand sanitizer. I'll keep hand sanitizer, chapstick, a toothbrush, and these tablets in my little cargo pants pocket. Um, just so that I don't fish it and like, it's time for bed, I just whip it and that's it. Cool, moving on. Um, I don't use these. Uh, I think this is for skiing. Uh, you rub, you open the pack, rub them together, and it's like a warmer for six hours. I haven't used them. Uh, I got earplugs. I'm a light sleeper. Uh, I'm an emergency responder by trade, so I wake up really easily. Um, so earplugs are always a must. Um, but the forest does sound beautiful. So, uh, sleeping next to a river is really nice. Um, but there are things that make thuds in the wood at night. I got Advil. I've never used Advil on the trail. Um, people who drink, I guess it's really bad for your liver or whatever. Um, I don't care, um, but I don't use it anyways. Oh, because I stretch a lot. I stretch a lot uh, compared to the general public. Um, I did yoga for a few years and I really fell in love with stretching. Um, I'm pretty flexible. What can I do? What can I do to impress you? I don't know. Um, this is my cooking system, you guys. I love this thing so much. Courtesy of Matt Schaefer again, he's my guru. Uh, this is really cool. Um, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to put it back together. Not a huge pain in the butt. So this is a Foster's. Again, you can't choose the color. I really wanted the green one. Um, it comes with like a little Live Strong band. Um, that's another conversation. And here's a, what they call a koozie, I think. You put it in here, boom. This is for like when you're actually ready to eat. Um, so the koozie, you go right there. So what you do, right, this is what you do. You do this, put it together. I had a lot of caffeine yesterday, so I'm like really shaky. Oh no, it goes like this. Get a little cone, put this in here. They're, these guys are pretty smart because they create like a little denture so that it sits on there. And then this thing, the All Star, uh, you take like not even that much denatured alcohol from the. Where'd you go, buddy? Um, you put a little denatured alcohol, you put it in there, you take the bick, you light it on fire, boom, boom. Two and a half, three minutes later, you have boiling water. Uh, where did the cap go? I had the cap. I threw it in here somewhere. You, you put something on there like that, and oh, here it is. You put this stuff into here, and it goes in that little Dr. Pepper thing, light it on fire, boom. Uh, if it's lit on fire, do not put nature alcohol. Wait for it to go out, or you might have an issue. This is just a little container. Some people use it as plates, but I'll eat my ramen or whatever out of that thing. Here's another life strong thing. All right, let's continue. Uh, I know this is getting a bit long, but this right here is probably the most important investment you'll make. Uh, shoes. All right, these are called trail runners. They are dirty. They're not dirty from backpacking, they're dirty from a mud runner I did. And I didn't study enough, and I should have used that little pressure washer thing to get the mud out of there. I love these things, New Balance. I have really small, wide feet. Um, and I got the widest size they did. Um, and they still weren't wide enough, but I got these shoe widening, stretchy things. You put them in there, you crank it, and it stretches, and I now love these things, because they dry quick. Um, all right, you guys, uh, it's a down jacket. You've all seen a down jacket before. This is Ghost Whisperer. Um, this is probably one of the better uh, like franchise jackets you can get just because it is so lightweight. It's six ounces. Um, uh, Matt Schaefer did not recommend this. He actually told me not to buy this. He told me to buy this other jacket. But you need to get it custom made and you need to get sizes. And the one thing he complained about on that jacket is the zipper didn't go all the way up to his chin and that's actually the one thing I noticed on this jacket it goes it goes all the way to the chin 
I'm not gonna be cool wearing this, but I don't care. Goes all the way to the chin. Again, the hoodie, you'll be a lot cooler without the hoodie, but again, this adds about 20 to 30% warmth. I can just already feel the warmth radiating from my hair into this area. All right, what's next? I don't use these, these are rain pants. Back in the days when I would get really cold, I would put on my pants, which they're not here by the way. My pants are not here. Um, and I put these as windbreakers. Uh, Matt Schaefer actually recommended another Mont Bell made in Japan, uh, windbreakers that I plan on investing in. But again, Southern California, it doesn't get that cold, nor does it rain that much. And I'm like, this is getting way too hot. Oh, another funny story. Shout out to Jonathan Beckdash. Uh, I told him about layers, and he layered really well, got the shell out and everything, and then he overheated, and he got panicked because he had gloves on, and he couldn't do the zippers, and then <laughs> he started panicking. And uh, I went over there, I unzipped his shell, and then unzipped his down, and I helped him out, and the heat just, and we laugh about that story. Right here, uh, I do have a tent. I don't use a tent. Uh, again, it doesn't rain enough. Um, again, I'd only use the tent for rain because the tent blocks your view of the most beautiful thing you're out there to see. This here is what's called a bivy sack. Um, it's essentially, I guess you can think of it as a sleeping bag, but it's a tent the size of a sleeping bag. So you get in your sleeping bag and then you kind of slide in here and it's your tent. Why do you use this? Uh, it's got thicker ground covering. Um, Bugs, that's why. Bugs. Uh, uh, bugs is another conversation that you need to think about. Trekking poles. Uh, these are great. Gossamer gear. Um, this was Matt Schaefer's number two recommendation. I think, I forgot what size that was. Anyhow. Uh, I don't like these twisting things, but I'll do it because it'll save some Trekking pole, and these are rubber stoppers. You put these on when you're traveling in an airplane or if you're traveling in a UNESCO declared site and they don't want these little tips blocking everything. Um, uh, again, these deserve another conversation, um, even whether or not to use trekking poles. Uh, there's, I use trekking poles, I use both of them. Uh, Andrew Skirka, a National Geographic's Backpacker of the Year, uses trekking poles. He says it propels him forward. I feel the same way. It takes weight off the knees. If you fall, you may roll your ankle, but if you have a trekking bowl, it's definitely take that weight off your ankle. And I've had that save my ankle quite a few times, especially when you're going downhill. And if the trail isn't nice, if it's not like soft packed dirt and you're actually going on stones, um, this will help with balance. Uh, if you have a good core, uh, you, don't, you definitely don't have to worry as much. Um, here's the second trekking pole. Yeah, and another conversation, do I use two trekking poles, do I use one, or do I use none? Uh, there's people out there who are perfectly happy with one. I like two. Uh, so this is the last thing in my bag. Um, here, uh, another hat, again, not a car camping hat, because I'm not gonna be cool in this, but uh, here's the thing, is if you want sun protection, you're not gonna be cool. And if you wanna be cool, you're not gonna get sun protection. That's just a fact. Um, here is what's called a, uh, uh, a buff. You can use these a variety of different ways. Um, like this, protects the shade. Um, if you want double sun protection, you can use a bandana. Uh, you'll notice that the brand on here is called Colon Sports. They're out of Korea, and they have the finest backpacking gear. Not the lightest weight, but definitely the highest quality. Um, their price point is norm normally twice that of North Face and Patagonia. Um, I definitely have one of their bags in my cool carbon camping kit. Here's a leaf. A beanie, uh, I definitely need a better beanie. Um, 
But I'm not too concerned about it because, again, I got those hoodies and those are pretty nice. Uh, here's some gloves. So why do I care about these sun gloves? Because when I was in school, I went to the writing center to learn how to write like essays and stuff. And there was this really pretty lady. She was like 28 years old. She was blonde, really attractive. And um, she just had these really old hands. And when we would go over the essay, like she'd get her pen and then she'd write up the essay and I would just think, man, he has some really old hands. So anyhow, God bless her heart. Um, but she taught me an invaluable lesson. Take care of your hands, lotion up your hands. Um, anyhow, uh, here's one. I actually don't bring this anymore, poor little guy. Uh, it's actually a, a buff, but it's more wool. I'll use this while I'm boarding or skiing. Here's another thing that is arguable. Um, it's a sleeve for your arm. Again, I don't really like this. People can sleep with this stuff on, like an Under Armour, but uh, uh, I just think it constricts blood flow. Um, I'd rather just use a lightweight long sleeve to get some protection. Um, here's some gloves. Uh, these I will bring. Um, just because cold hands suck. Um, and here's my knickknack paddywhack gear. Um, this, I love this. This is the best underwear. I'm so upset they stopped making it. Uh, and here's some thick uh, night socks and gingies. That's what I meant to show you the first time in gingies, toe socks. Um, I put one on just for you guys. And what I don't have are those. Uh... So well, you gotta be careful. So these are actually really thick wool socks and I'm getting really hot. You want like thick wool socks. Um, again, these are not the ones I hike with. I hike with a much lighter pair. And you do have to put your toes in there. But I do think these toe things are definitely worth um, the effort and the investment. Again, these are like $12 a pair. Um, because when you put your foot down, it does give you a little bit more grip, even though they're in the shoe. And the toes, they don't rub. So there's no blisters in between the toes. The material is really good. Uh, you can get some with some zany designs. Um, This is actually the pair I do use. Um, what else? Uh, a map. Generally, you don't really need a map. Uh, I got some maps right here. Um, if you go somewhere, you're not gonna hike the entire thing. Uh, so I got this trail that I'm doing. Um, one of my buddies, he doesn't want to go here for some reason. He comes up with every excuse to not go there. Even though it's like the second most uh, Disneylandish place in the park. Um, this is a map, National Geographic makes one. This is really cool, not for hiking, but it's a, it's a, like a, a Thomas guide for California. And it breaks it up into regions and it shows all the camping sites and the trails. Uh, this is Death Valley, and this one is Joshua Tree. Um, I spent a lot of time out on Joshua Tree. Oh, what else? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, one thing I noticed when I put on the sock, I usually have an arch support little thing. Uh, that's really cool. Um, I don't bring music. You know, people have different goals for backpacking. For some people, it's an exercise. For some people, it's a distance. Some people, they call them peak baggers. It's like, oh, I wanna hike that peak and that peak. Uh, some people just wanna go car camping. Um, some people just want solitude. Uh, I, I definitely am one of those guys. Like, if I had one week to live, I would say goodbye to all my loved ones and go to the forest by a lake and just like read Quran. Um, 
But I think the goal is to definitely, like for me, how do you measure a good backpacker? It's the person who laughs most on the trail. The person who laughs most. Like, so if you're hiking a lot and you're not in shape, you're not gonna be laughing. If you're itchy or if you're cold, you're not gonna be laughing. If you don't have a good state of mind, you're not gonna be laughing. But if you are in shape and if you are well prepared and you have a good state of mind and all your other buddies are well prepared, it's time to crack jokes and shoot the shit and you will be laughing. Um, and, uh, and if you're by yourself, I make myself laugh. Uh, and I'll sing my own songs. But uh, if you're watching this video, you generally know who I am and I've asked you to come backpacking with me. And I really hope you do. Uh, it's definitely a, one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing to do on this planet. But then again, um, God forbid, if I have a car accident tomorrow and I lose both my legs, I don't think I'll be phased one bit. Um, I won't be able to backpack anymore, that's for sure. But I mean, there's plenty of other things that I'm, you know, dying to explore. But this life is too short to get them all. And uh, I hope all is well. Uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.